everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, I'm using this linen fabric, 100% linen fabric in this beautiful grey colour. And on to the cutting out. This is my front piece. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. and snipping my notches. I have one dart in this, a couple of notches where my sleeve will go, notch at the centre front, and a notch to help me out when I come to put my pocket on later. So now to mark my darts. So I've just popped a pin in at the point of the dart, and now just marking that with my pen. And then using the notches you see me clip there, I'm just going to line my ruler up with those notches and that little dot and draw my line. Same on the other side. And pin. So I'm making sure my dart legs top and bottom line up, popping a pin through the top, out through the bottom, making sure I'm staying on that line the whole way down. And when I get to the end, so to the point, I'll pop my pin in on the horizontal. That will just help me when I come to sew. So that's that done. And now on to the back. So no darts in the back, just a couple of notches at my arm and one at the top of my vent. Two layers of fabric underneath that pattern piece also. And my sleeves. Again, two layers of fabric underneath my pattern pieces and just those same notches at the top of the sleeve. And then just a couple more pieces to cut out. So my front facing, this piece, and my back facing. So my back facing is on the fold, and my front facing, I had two layers underneath my pattern piece. So now on to some stitching. So I'm just sewing up my darts here. I'm making sure that my needle runs directly along the line you see me mark, letting my threads run off at the end and tying. So that's my darts done. And I've just pressed that dart, making sure everything lies nice and flat. And now to give this jacket the trench style, I want to add some cape pieces. So I've given myself a cape piece for the back and for the front both of which I've cut two out of main fabric and two out of cotton lawn. And I've just pinned, as you can see here, just round the outer edge. And now stitching those two pieces together, right sides, at my one centimeter seam allowance, just pivoting around that nice curve and up towards the neck, back stitching. So that's my two pieces joined together. I now want to trim down that seam. Turn the whole thing right sides out and give it a nice press. So I've went ahead and done that here. And now I just want to join the lining fabric with the outer fabric along the edge I haven't stitched. So starting at the neck, down the curve, which will be the top of my sleeve and down the side seam back stitching at the start and the end and as I'm tacking I'm tacking within my seam allowance so that's that done so now to top stitch so I'm using just some standard thread in my bobbin and some top stitching thread in my needle I've popped my needle in just a couple of millimeters away from the edge coming down the center front around that nice bend and back stitching at the end using a little bit of a longer stitch length. So that's my first line done and now for my second I've moved my needle over just a little bit to the left pivoting again around that nice curve and back stitching. I really love how this looks so I'm going to use this same finish on all of my additional pieces. The second addition that I want to put on the front is some pockets and some pocket flaps. So for the pockets themselves, I have one front piece and one lining. I've laid those right sides together and stitched 
just in the same way as I did the cape, pulled them through and pressed. And then for the flaps, the only difference here is I've used the outer fabric on both pieces. I've also run some interfacing along these just to give them a little bit of structure. So that's how my pocket and my flaps look before they've been top stitched and I'll show that in a second. So now to pull the front pieces together. So the cape piece you see me stitch earlier, I'm going to add to the top and pin in place. So again here, I'm going to stitch within my seam allowance. So I just want to hold all of these pieces together, which as I mentioned, will make it much easier for me to work with the whole garment without anything moving around. So I'm just running my stitch line from the side seam, right up the top of the arm and around the neck, back stitching at the start and the end, and that's my front cape attached. And now for the pockets. So I've went ahead and ran one line of top stitching along the bottom and up the side, but two lines of top stitching along the top. And you'll see why in a second. So I've just lined my pocket up with the notch you seen me cut earlier, pinned and now ready to stitch. So I'm stitching here a couple of millimetres in from the edge of the pocket. I'm using just some regular thread, starting at the side of the pocket, coming down around that nice curve, across the bottom, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's my pocket tacked in place. So now I just want to finish off the top stitching. So I'm going to run over the top of the stitch line you've just seen me sew, but I'm going to pop some top stitching thread in my needle. And I'm doing this because this will make the pocket a little bit stronger and just give a really nice finish to the outside. So I'm just starting along that bottom edge around that nice curve and up the side. So that's my pocket in place. Now for the pocket flap. So I'm placing the flap one inch above the top of the pocket. And again here, I've ran two lines of top stitching along the bottom of that flap, but just one line along the top. So I've just tacked in place along the side and over the top to do exactly the same thing again then. So run that line of top stitching with my top stitching thread right over the top of those tacking stitches. That'll just finish it all off nicely. So that's my pocket and my pocket flap in place. So this is how my front looks so far. So I'm just setting that aside for a second to work on the back. So I've laid my two back pieces on top of one another right sides and just pinned along that center back seam. I'm now stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, from the back vent right up to the neck. So that's that done. And now to finish off that center back seam, I've decided to use a flat fell seam here because I want the inside of this little jacket to be super neat and tidy. So to do the flat fell seam, I've just trimmed one side of that seam down by about two thirds. I'm now folding the other side of that seam over the top of the cut edge, giving myself a nice crease line and pressing. Doing that the whole way down. And when I get to the top of the vent, the little notch you see me snip earlier, helps out to maintain that nice angle at the top there you see here. So to finish off the flat fell seam, I just need to stitch right along that crease line. This time I'm just using regular thread and I'm stitching from the neck down to the top of the vent, back stitching at the start and the end. And now just to deal with the top of the vent. So I'm not attaching this at present, I'm just sort of holding the seam in underneath. 
So running those stitches right along the edge of the crease and I'll deal with the open vent in a second. So that's my two back pieces attached. So now I want to tidy up the edge of the vent and to do that I've decided to bias finish that edge just because I like the contrast of the white and this fabric and also it is a super neat finish. So I'm using just some small bias tape and I'm using my binder foot here. So I've popped my linen fabric in through the foot and I'm making sure the edge of that linen lines up with the little gap between the fabric on the bias tape like you can see here. So right along the centre of the bias tape using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. And now I'm ready to close up the top of the vent. So I'm just running a stitch line directly over the top of the line you seen me sew earlier, back stitching at the start and the end. And from the outside, that's how that looks. Really nice and neat. And from the inside, so love that. So just like the front, I want to add some little extras to the back as well. So in addition to the cape pieces you seen earlier, I've cut myself a belt made up of one side linen and one side lining. I've interfaced both of those and I've just stitched them up in exactly the same way as I've done all of my other little additions. So I have all my top stitching there. And now just to put the whole thing together, just like I did the front. So lining up my cape pieces with the top of my arms, lining up those belt pieces, pinning, and ready to stitch. So just in the same way I stitched the front, I'm stitching within my seam allowance, starting with the side of the belt, and then up to the side seam of the cape, around the top of the arm, down the neck, and back stitching. And I only show one side here, but of course I do it on the other side. And this is how it looks. So again, I'm going to set the back piece aside and work on the sleeves next. So the top part of my sleeves have two opposing curves and to make it a little bit easier to sew, I'm just going to ease the top bit of one side down a little bit. So to do that, I've just placed my finger at the back of my presser foot and stitched with a little bit of a longer stitch length just along the sort of deepest part of that curve. You could see that here. And that will just reduce the length of that fabric a little bit and allow me to sew this quite accurately without having, hopefully, any sort of puckers or anything in my fabric. So stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end, and that's my seam sewn. And there you see that little eased bit at the top. So I've went ahead and flat felled that seam as well, just to keep it tied in with that center back seam that I sewed earlier and keep the inside nice and tidy. And just like the back and the front, I have one additional piece I want to add on to the sleeve, and that's a little cuff. So for this one, I have two layers of that linen fabric, both interfaced, and I've sewn this one up exactly the same way as I've sewn all of my other little additional pieces. So now I'm ready to attach. So I'm measuring up from the cut edge of my hem four inches, popping in a little pin on my cuff, and I'm just going to run some tacking stitches within my seam allowance along the edge. And that is my cuff attached. And now I'm ready to start the overall assembly. And in preparation for that, I'm going to do the same thing as I did at the top of the sleeve when I was attaching my two pieces together. I'm going to ease down some of that fabric along the edge. Again, this will just help 
everything to slot nicely into one another without having lots and lots of gathers in my fabric that I could stitch over the top of. So I really like this tip. So I've just lined up my sleeve with my bodice and pinned along that seam line. And here I'm stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, back stitching at the end, taking it nice and gentle here. So that's how that looks. And now to finish off the edge here, I've decided to bias finish this one as well, just in exactly the same way as I did the vent at the center back. And here I'm just lining up the other side of my sleeve, so the back with my back bodice, pinning along that seam line, stitching, and binding the edge. So that's my sleeve front and back attached. So you can see that here. And now before I close up the side seam, I want to run some top stitching along the edges of the cape arm seam. Just to keep everything tied in nicely together. So just where you see me point out here, I'm going to run two lines of top stitching. So I've made sure that that bias finished edge is pressed over towards the cape and I'm running my two lines of top stitching directly on top of that using that same top stitching thread from before, back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks. Super neat and tidy, I really love this finish. So that's my front and back all nicely top stitched. And now I'm ready to close up the side seams. So in preparation for that, I've just ran some of that same bias tape along the hem of the cuff. And I've pinned my side seams together wrong sides this time. And I'm doing that because I want to French seam the sides. And the reason for that, rather than flat felling, is there's a lot of additional fabric with all my extra little bits along the side seam and that will make the side seam quite thick and it would be tricky to try and fold those edges over. So I've chosen to do a French seam here with a little addition, which you'll see in a second. So I've just ran my first stitch line at about half of my seam allowance, so at about five millimeters. I've then trimmed down that seam and pressed. So now my fabric is right sides together and I'm ready to stitch. So again here, I'm stitching at about half of my seam allowance, so about five millimeters, the whole way from the hem of the sleeve, right down the side seam to the hem of the jacket, back stitching at the start and the end, and now to the little addition I mentioned. So I'm going to sew down that crease. So for a French seam, you would just leave it here, but because the rest of the seams on the inside are flat felled, I want this all to tie together on the inside. So the only way I could come up with to do that is to sew down the French seam. So I'm just sewing it down along the side seam. I'm not going into the arm. And you see here that it looks a bit more like a flat fell seam. So it just ties everything in together and also gives a really nice finish on the inside. So that's how that looks. And as I say, I haven't ran that additional line of stitching along the sleeve. So before I move on to the facing and the collar, I just want to run some of that bias tape along the hem of the jacket. Again, that will tie it in with the sleeve and the vent. And once I have the facing done, I'll be all ready to close everything up. So for the facing, I've interfaced both my front pieces and my back. And now to attach those at the shoulder. So I've just pinned those in place, ready to stitch. So back stitching at the start, at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the end. And then to finish this seam, I'm just going to fold over both of my edges in underneath and press them. So you can see I've done that here. 
and then sew right along that creased edge. I've shown this in previous videos. So that's one side done. And off camera I've went ahead and done the rest. And that's how it looks front and back. And then the same bias finish along the outer edge of the facing. And again, I've done that off camera just so that you guys don't have to sit through this. So that's my facing ready to go. So now the last pieces I have to attach are my collar pieces. So I have an upper and under collar and a collar stand, two pieces. So just snipping notches there at the shoulder on my collar stand and then at the centre of each of those pieces. So I've interfaced both my upper and under collar and I'm just going to line those up right sides together and pin ready to stitch. And I'm stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, pivoting around that nice curved edge And I'm taking this relatively slowly here. I want these curves to be super nice. Back stitching at the end. So that's that done. So now just to trim that seam. So the same as before, just trimming this back by about two thirds of the seam allowance. That will just help to make everything sit nice and neat in underneath. So I've just turned that right sides out, pressed it and pinned along that open edge. I'm going to just tack this open edge closed. Again, just like before with all of the tacking, this will just help keep everything where it should be while I continue to work on it. Now ready to top stitch. Back stitching at the start. Lining up the edge of the fabric with the edge of my presser foot. My needle is all the way over to the right. Pivoting around those curves and back stitching at the end. And now for the second line. So I've moved my needle more over to the centre, backstitched and doing exactly the same thing again. Pivoting around the curve, and backstitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And now to attach the collar to the collar stand. So the collar stand is interfaced as well, both pieces. And I'm just lining up the notch that you seen me cut earlier. And pinning the whole way across. And this time just tacking again. So I just want to hold this collar stand to the collar and I'll sew it in place when I sew my second side of the collar stand. So you'll see that here. So that's it tacked nicely in place. Now lining up the second piece of my collar stand. And when I stitch here, you'll see this a bit more closely, but I'm going to pull the collar away a little bit from the edge just to hold it out of the way while I stitch this time at my one centimeter seam allowance. So just holding the collar back a little bit, stitching really gently here, pivoting around that nice curve. Taking it nice and gently. And the same thing on this side again. So just folding the collar out of the way a little bit pivoting around that nice curve and back stitching at the end. 
so now just to trim that seam allowance down and turn things right way out. So you can see how that collar is attached there. So no puckers or anything, I've got a nice curved edge. So again, I just want to tack the two bottom pieces of my collar stand together. So doing that here. And now to top stitch. And this time I have top stitching thread in my needle, but I also have top stitching thread in my bobbin. On all the previous top stitching I've done, I've just been using the top stitching thread in the needle. But because the collar stand, you can see both sides of it at the neck, I want to ensure that you can see the top stitching from both sides. So pivoting around that last curve, back stitching, and that's my collar ready to be attached to my facing. So I'm placing my collar at the notch in the center of my facing, right sides together and pinning. And you've seen me cut a little notch in my facing. So I'm making sure the collar stand edges line up with those notches. So it just helps to make sure everything's in place. So again here I'm stitching within my seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and the end. So that's my collar tacked to my facing. Now I'm going to stitch the whole thing together. So the jacket and the facing at my one centimeter seam allowance. So again, I'm placing my collar right sides with the jacket right sides. I'm pinning at the center with my notches and also pinning that little notch at the center front of the coat with the edge of my collar. And then just to pin in between and the whole way down the center front. And when I'm pinning the center front, I'm first of all pinning the hem of my facing to the hem of my jacket. The facing is a little bit shorter than the jacket. So pinning this first before I pin up my side seam will make sure everything's where it should be. So I'm now ready to stitch across the hem at the bottom, up the side seam, right the whole way around the neck and down the other side. So here I'm just stitching the facing to the hem first. That's how that looks. And then I'm pulling out my jacket fabric so that my facing sits an inch or so up from the hem itself. And then stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way up the center front. Pivoting around that nice lapel piece and then the whole way across the facing, the collar and the jacket neck. Now down the other side. And when I get to the bottom of this side, I'm just stopping just short of the facing edge at the hem. Pulling that fabric out of the way and stitching right across the facing and hem itself. So that's that in place. Now that fabric that I had tucked in up underneath, I'm now pulling that out and I'm going to stitch at my one centimeter seam allowance, just that last little bit that I left. So that's my facing attached and my collar attached. So now I just have a few little bits left to do. So I have some understitching to do around the collar. My hem of the jacket and the hem of the sleeves and some of that nice top stitching just to finish off the center front. 
So in preparation for that understitching, I have trimmed down that whole seam along the facing. I've pressed it over towards the facing and I'm starting at the curve of the collar stand, back stitching, and I'm sewing directly through that seam underneath. This will just help to make sure everything sits nice and flat. Back stitching at the curve at the other side of the collar. And that's my understitching all done. And now to the top stitching. So again, starting at the curve of the under collar, coming around the curve of the lapel, down the center front, back stitching. That's my first line done. And for the second and last line of top stitching on this little jacket, back stitching at the start, pivoting around that nice curve of the lapel, down to the hem and back stitching. Super neat and tidy, I love this. And now for the hem. So I'm just running my stitch line alongside that bias tape the whole way around the hem, doing exactly the same thing on the hem of the sleeve, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching at the start and the end, and that's how that looks. So this is where I am. I just have one more thing to do and then this jacket is complete. And that is to add some buttons. So I'm going to add buttons to the cuffs, to the cape pieces at the front, to the pocket flaps, to the cape pieces at the back, and to the center of the belt. And after a good steam, and those buttons are indeed sewn on. This is how it looks. I absolutely love this. If you've seen my previous video, I made another version of this. I said in that video that this was my favorite thing I think I've made, and I still stand by that. I love the fit of this. I love all the details. I love how comfortable it is. It's super casual but a little bit smart as well. Perfect little summer duster jacket that's cool and just so lovely to wear. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Tuesday in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye folks.